Hi, it's Scott from Hoslin and uh, we uh, want to do a little video here just doing a bit of a showdown or a talk uh, about discussion about uh, some of the different materials that we use. Um, so I think it's worth going over because we make a point of really trying to be um, a little bit more premium with some of our material choice and I wanted to just go through some of the different aspects of it and explain what they are and why we use them. So um, first of all we're going to start with this is what goes on the inside of the house. So in raw form this actually um, is the inside kind of paneling and it's a pine tongue and groove and you'll see here it just uh, slots together like this and then we end up secret nailing it in through here and it, uh, it fixes to the wall really strong. And um, just to go over what I have here is a little off cut of the same stuff I just showed you and then next to it is a little off cut of chip rock so plasterboard um, so this is what's typically used in a house I'm not really too sure about other tiny houses um, I can only guess that some people use this as well um, a lot of people I think use this product or at least something that looks similar it could be it could be yeah, a synthetic material nonetheless but we use just a real McCoy uh, real solid lengths of pine machined into tongue and groove and um, just to quickly show you like a bit of a strength difference I'm just going to grab this and just going to snap it so real easy um, not very strong and if this gets wet it just turns to mush as well and you can see two fingers snap no good uh, this is the pine here I'm just going to try and break it um, it probably okay I need my knee So, uh, I'm no weakling, <laughs> but uh, that is now broke, um, and you can tell, quite a lot stronger than, than uh, the jib rock, and um, so it's, uh, it's, relatively speaking, it's far superior, uh, tolerates water, uh, 100 times better, if not more, and uh, it's a lot stronger, so it's going to... Um, be um, a lot more impact resistant and just take those everyday knocks and bangs a lot better and um, so that's what we use there beautiful product uh, now moving on to the kitchen and the old cabinetry um, we have uh, two samples again here this is what we use in everything all our cabinetry and every tiny house this is a standard thing that we use this is not an extra and uh, this is called rhino ply and what it is is a plywood you can see all the different layers in there so there's um one two three four five six seven eight nine nine layers uh plywood always has an odd number because the two outside layers are going in the same direction so um, and then on the covering of that on the outside of that you have like a melamine kind of material so on a lot of um chipboard kit you use for kitchens they're usually like more of a paper impregnated uh, surface whereas this is actually melamine so this is technically a, a bench top grade um, hardness and quality so but this is used for all the all just the normal car carcasses the cabinets down low and the uh, the wall units as well so this is uh, really strong very it's all waterproof glue and everything you use and uh, very very strong very good with water and then next to it here is a little bit of kind of a this is typically what's used for kitchen cargos it's it's uh, the normal chipboard and it's got the uh, doesn't look like as strong as a surface on I can't tell exactly what it is this is just something that we got as a cover sheet cover sheet is what you get put on top of other ply sheet deliveries just to protect the top one so they chuck a they chuck a, a an old cheap sheet on top so this is what we had lying around so this is this is what's used in normal kitchens so I'm just going to show again uh, I'm just going to snap it with my hands here so uh, a bit of, I bet this would be a lot stronger than jip rock so anyway that's that was pretty easy to break actually in fairness um, so you can see there just all crumbs crumbles apart um, not not super strong not very good in the wet either uh, the rhino ply um, not sure I'm going to be able to break this so certainly not with my bare hands Whoa! it did break but that took I don't know probably five times the force just roughly so it's a lot stronger um, and in fairness the the grain way was such that uh, it's um, um, it was that, that was actually the weak weak way so doesn't really matter it gets cut whatever way very strong very good in the wet very good hard wearing surface and um, we'll just take a break here I'll pause it 
Sorry, folks, we had a bit of an interruption there with one of our children. So um, uh, where we were at was uh, the, the interior cabinetry, the rhino ply versus the chipboard. So this is then moving on to the uh, what we use in the flooring. So typically in a, in a build, in a new build, you'll find like uh, this um, chipboard flooring. And uh, it's not a terrible product, but it is still chipboard. Um, legally, they have to be rated, as far as I understand, to tolerate a certain amount of weather. So the glue that's used is... Um, probably waterproof if not very well water resistant so it can actually handle being the weather because the floor goes down first and then the frame can stand bare so this has to tolerate a little bit of water um, but in terms of strength um, not as strong as the plywood and um, this is what we use in the, in the tiny houses floors um, and this is a plywood floor product and you can actually see there just a tongue and then on the other end there's a um, sorry, this is a groove and the other side has got a tongue so they slot in together and then they'll come in big 2.4 by 1.2 sheets and then what we do is actually paint the bottom of one side with a bitumen product uh, just to give it a bit extra seal and um, so just a quick comparison between these two uh, also this would be naturally a lot better in the in the wet because uh, there's um, a lot less mucking around that's been done with it it's less synthetic or whatever you want to call it so this is the um, chipboard just bracket here demonstration pushing quite hard yeah, it's quite strong and um, we'll just break it with a mini yeah I'm quite surprised it's not too bad it's not too bad um, but uh, there you go that's the chipboard the plywood now you'll see here similar with this here the grains actually going this way on the two outside layers you can't see it there um, so there'll be slightly less strength this way um, because you've got the, the the layers of ply that go this direction are in the middle and there's one less of them remember that um, it's the odd number thing so you've got one two three layers going this way and then you've got four layers going this way grain wise so it's going to be a little bit weaker than what it normally would in this sense but anyway so yep can't break it with my bare hands and then yeah it's quite a lot stronger oi ay 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 hurt me neither so it's quite a lot stronger still and uh, anyway so that's that broke so uh, a lot stronger better in the wet and um, also a little bit lighter as well so that's a bonus in that sense uh, so that's those ones and then <laughs> I'm out of breath now um, it's pathetic isn't it <laughs> so what we have here is what we use as our feature timber um, on the inside uh, it's called cypress pine some people just call it cypress um, so uh, it is a pine however it's very hard it's a very hard wood so just to demonstrate this here is a normal piece of pine this is actually a piece of framing pine um, and we've actually machined the top that used to be blue um, and still it's a good pine. Um, you can get pines that are softer than this. I'm not exactly sure of the of the breed or whatever it is. Um, but just to demonstrate um, the hardness difference, you have um, just a gentle lock and hammer. You can see there with about the same amount of force, there's a lot less of a dent on the cypress than there is on the normal pine. Now this is still a good product, but you can see this is uh, technically speaking, it's a softwood, but in reality it's very hard. So um, you could people will refer to this as a hardwood, um, and you can see. Um, if you can see, you can't probably see in the camera there, but there's lots and lots of um, uh, there's lots and lots of rings there, so a lot of growth in terms of age. So that's pretty cool. Um, you end up with a um, pretty uh, pretty nice timber that not everyone's privileged to have such a nice slow growing timber um, at their um, availability. So that's that there really. Um, and this cypress, uh, it's a little bit weak when it comes to um, splitting it splits very easy and this this direction it's not terribly strong for um, as far as timbers go however that's not really a, a problem in in the context that we use them so we gain from their hardness and they are pretty strong still very, it's a very strong timber in fact um, but uh, mainly it's very hard it's also very good in the weather it's a very good exterior timber uh, which means it's going to be good for bench tops and stuff and floors as much which which is what we use it for. So uh, it planes very nicely, like with a sharp plane and chisels, it really cuts, it's very waxy, very resinous kind of timber, so it's beautiful to work with, except you hit the odd knot and that, that makes things a bit difficult at times. But uh, in general, it's really beautiful to work with um, in terms of with the grain. Uh, when you cut it, because it's a little bit um, weak in that direction, it also is a little bit um, splits quite easy, so you get splinters. So we just have to be mindful of that when you work with it. Um, so 
really good timber. Uh, it's beautiful. It smells pretty good. Um, it's hard. Um, it's durable. It's really good in the in water in terms of exterior. Uh, so and it's very heavy. So you can't tell obviously the weight, but this is a lot heavier. This is like a hardwood in in terms of weight. Um, so uh, whereas normal pine, it's a smaller piece. I know, but it's a lot lighter. So uh, moving on to this is what we use. Uh, this is part of the actual wall framing here. It's the same as this, um, but this has been machined down. And uh, this is H2, it's termite treated and I'm not exactly sure what else it covers with that treatment but it's kind of the standard thing and um, um, it's, a, it's a really good product, uh, it's quite a nice hard pine, I don't know exactly what it is but you can get softer pines than this and uh, so this is what's used for the frames and then what we have there is the fiberglass insulation, I believe this is a um, Earthwool brand, and it's made from mostly recycled bottles. I understand, and so this is um, really good. It irritates you as you use it, so you got to be careful and you got to not breathe it in when you're working with it. Um, but this is, you know, it's very cost effective. It's in a, and it's a very effective uh, insulation. Um, it doesn't, you know, you could chuck this in the fire and it's not going to light up, so it's not uh, doesn't light up either. Um, and uh, so this what goes in between all the walls and the, f and the ceiling as well so it insulates well and then on the outside of the frame we put the the sarking so this is a piece of sarking here that I've cut and you put the silver side towards the inside and that gets stapled onto the house and you wrap the whole house and you start at the bottom make way up the top so you've got overlaps and then all the joints get taped up with a really uh, it's quite expensive actually a really expensive uh, silver tape and sticks really well as well uh, so that goes around the house to um, give it extra insulation and an extra moisture barrier as well for condensation and stuff um, and then this is the tongue of groove we've seen and then on the outside what we use is this new color bond product it's a matte finish this is a piece that's been sitting around got a bit of dust on it but just to it's a really gorgeous finish in the sun it, it looks like a slate or a stone it's really beautiful and um, to talk about the steel itself it's not a mild steel um, um, what's used for uh, color bond and roofs and that it's kind of it's a very hard steel so it's relatively thin and light but it's really very strong so to bend this it takes quite a bit of force and if you were to have a piece of mild steel the same thickness it's a lot softer so really old really old um, corrugated iron that you find on old sheds or really old houses um, you'll find that it's a lot easier to bend so this modern stuff is really stiff and strong and uh, as well as being light um, and then this is what we use for the timber on the outside. This is Western Red Cedar and this piece actually comes from Canada. Um, I think the majority of, it, majority, of, majority of it probably comes from Canada as far as I understand. Um, and uh, it's a really nice timber and it weathers extremely well and uh, it's also quite lightweight so that's a bonus for us. Um, this particular piece actually has a beautiful bit of grain going on. It's got a really nice figured figured grain, which is a pity it gets to get used on. It's a pity it gets used on a house. Not this piece, of course, but um, yes, it's very good. It's it doesn't it doesn't crack even when it's in the weather. It stays as a complete piece of timber very well, so uh, it's good in that sense. And um, it smells like uh, what you'd find a lot of pencils would typically smell like it's kind of got that wood shaven pencil shaven smell to it funnily enough so a uh, good guess is that pencils are made from the same material or something similar uh, so that's that there and that gets overlapped of course so uh, the piece on top overlaps on that and then uh, you can actually see there it's quite a quite a taper on it um, and then so that goes on there and that's the weatherboard lovely stuff and the last thing I wanted to just point out was we use these uh, screws most of the most of the time on a lot of the structural stuff and whatnot. Uh, and they're worth screws. The brand is worth. And these are really really beautiful. They're like the nicest screw I've ever come across. They're like a piece of art almost. And uh, this looks like stainless steel, but it's actually uh, galvanized. And um, these are rated for outside um, use, galvanized. So. Uh, mostly when you have like a galvanized or a zinc coating like as smooth as nice as this it's not for exterior these are for exterior they're just that well made the thread is really nice and sharp and they're extremely strong and the screwing system is uh, I believe it's unique to worth you have to buy the bits from them uh, it's very reliable uh, you don't get any breakages uh, and it don't you don't get much fatigue because uh, you don't have to push real hard and uh, it grips really well so these are the screws and uh, we've got some smaller smaller screws here as well from worth and they're um, similar kind of system 
on the head, only a smaller version, and we'd use these to put together all our cabinetry, for example. So uh, it's just uh, thought it'd be worth pointing out. Um, and uh, basically, that's it. So we make a bit of an effort to uh, select stuff that's um, a little bit better in the grand scheme of things, and um, we try and do a good job. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you wanted to see some more videos, you can let us know and we'd be happy to uh, do other videos similar to this. So, um, yes, thanks for watching and uh, please share our um, business and our video and, and like as well. So thanks very much and keep following us. Cheers. Bye.